Perhaps none are as personal or as fragile as movie costumes. Many have been tossed away. Many have disintegrated from the elements. But some have been saved thanks to two movie buffs with the classiest closets in all of Hollywood. Safely stashed in an Irwindale, California warehouse, you'll find magnificent hand-me-downs from classic Hollywood. Long after a film's been created, there are still these mementos, garments worn by people who never truly existed, and I find this fascinating. It often takes three or four viewings before Bill Thomas and partner Larry McQueen figure out a film's plot. They concentrate more on what actors wear, less on what they say. Thomas believes the movie studios of pre-war Hollywood turned out some of the finest garments ever made. He says neglect and the passage of time have wiped out 98% of the wardrobe collections from that era. The hand craftsmanship is exceptional. The materials, the beads, the jewels and stones were handmade in Austria. Those factories no longer exist. The embroiderers came from generations of embroiderers, and that talent has been lost. Here's Travis Benton's draping creation for Claudette Colbert in Cleopatra. Now, forgettable films may have unforgettable wardrobes. The great Walter Plunkett designed this detailed period outfit for Roger Moore in 1955's Diane. Bill Thomas can tell with one look at a garment exactly what studio it came from. Absolutely. Every studio was run by a wardrobe head, and they had their own style, their own flair, certain qualities. As with Paramount, you'll notice that a great deal of their pieces are trimmed with fur. Adolf Zucker was a furrier, and he instructed all of his designers to keep fur very prevalent in the films to help the industry itself. The masterpiece of the collection, designed by Adrian for Greta Garbo in her title role as Queen Christina. Weighing nearly 60 pounds, the dress made so much noise dragging across the floor, no actor could speak when Garbo walked. The money that was spent on one garment for a moment of film time was astronomical. When this gown was created in the early 30s, it was built at a cost of $30,000, which was a tremendous amount of money for the time. However, it was created for a goddess. Thomas says the studios have a surprising lack of vanishing legacy. Only a small number of collectors track down garments through sleuthing, scholarship, or just plain luck. Every garment has its own story. Some pieces are traded for. Some pieces are bought in lot buys when the owner doesn't know what they are. Many pieces are purchased out of auction. Here we've got uh, another Bruce Willis from Moonlighting, one of Dionne Warwick's stage pieces. Collecting the wardrobe of classic Hollywood gets expensive. That's why in another warehouse across town, Bill Thomas acquires racks of clothing from contemporary Hollywood that he resells at public auction. One would hope that a room like this could afford the financing of one piece, but most likely not. This is one of the great garments of film history, designed by Adrian for Norma Shearer in Marie Antoinette. It's made with authentic 18th century gold bullion lace. Look a little closer, and you'll see how time, the elements, and neglect have taken their toll. A dress like this, is one of the reasons why Bill Thomas and Larry McQueen aren't just collectors. See, we're missing some um, rhinestones. Some little rhinestones are missing here. Bill Thomas and Larry McQueen begin the restoration process on one of their most recent and finest acquisitions, a gown designed by Travis Benton for Marlena Dietrich in the film Angel. It took hundreds of hours to create the original. Restoration is painstaking work, too. Anyone who collects costumes know this dress exists. And to finally have the opportunity to be a caretaker of it for a while is incredible. It's a dream come true. In a few years, Bill Thomas plans to take the collection on a world tour. Later, perhaps housing this grand legacy of classic Hollywood in its own museum, not a warehouse in Irwindale, California. The fashion industry for mankind crescendoed in the 30s with Hollywood. The culmination of the money, the talent, the workmanship... It happened in the 30s, and I don't think we'll ever see it again. Bill Thomas says cost wasn't the only reason that the exquisite detailing of the 1930s disappeared. Designers came to realize in time that the camera just doesn't pick up the intricate patterns well. Who wants to do work that will never be appreciated? 
I'm Peter Jones. I hope you join us next time, only in Hollywood. Peter Jones Wardrobe, provided by Sammy Dinar Mendo. Mend